have a guest for today's class. And she's talking right now. <laughs> Um, say hello. Um, this last week has been a bit crazy. Um, I got sick and we weren't sure if it was COVID, so I isolated and then we found out that it was COVID and then we were just being super careful before we rejoined with my daughter who was high risk. So she's going to be here, um, for class. I'm hoping she'll fall asleep by class, but we will see. <laughs> Why are you so loud? Anyways, if you are watching the replay, um, feel free to look down in the description below for timestamps. You can skip ahead this chat and uh, get straight to painting. But for all of you here who are, um, who are here to paint and here to chat with me um make sure to uh let me know where you're painting from in the uh, comment section and i would love to chat with you before class <clears throat> i feel like i'm gonna be super distracted this whole class if she's not asleep i'm pretty quiet it's probably because i'm <clears throat> i am not talking towards the uh the mic but let me know let me know if this is better um i'll make sure to not be talking behind me because there's a baby behind me but All right. Should just say. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's see. I don't think I'm gonna use my traceable for today. I think I'm just going to do it. It's nature. Um, but if you do want the traceable for this class and the next class which is going to be our car um that one you might want a traceable for so if you would like a traceable um feel free to grab that um it also just helps support the channel and support the free classes and things like that hi michelle um the increase gain i haven't touched it since last class um so I'm not sure why it would be, um, why it would be changed. Let's see. I can't, is that, is that better? Let me know if that's better. I just turned it up a tad bit. <clears throat> if we have any announcements um that's better okay great <laughs> i'm like talking to myself uh my husband's in the other room talking at me so that's why i'm talking to myself in the comments um if you are here please let me know in the comments below i would love to chat with you before class let me know how your christmas was um we haven't i haven't been on here since like mid-december um, so it's been like five or six weeks <coughs> and I'm excited to paint again. I have painted, uh, since then I've painted with my patrons, um, on Patreon, but, uh, I haven't been live. Um, actually my latest one that I just did, um, was this and, um, it came out really well and I love it and I'm excited to just do more like this um that was our winter landscape our frozen landscape and um that was a lot of fun that one's available in my patreon right now uh, we did that last friday um but yeah hello tanya from ontario canada thank you 
Um, I'm really hoping that she'll fall asleep in the next 20 minutes, half an hour before class starts. Um, but wish me luck. Um, <clears throat> yeah, she's, she's in here cause, um, I had gotten sick and we didn't know what it was. Um, it ended up being COVID. So we, I had isolated as soon as I had symptoms cause my other daughter is, um, my other daughter is high risk. And so we just didn't want to take any chances. Um, thankfully I didn't get too sick. Um, but, um, but yeah, so she'll be here for class. I might hold her. Maybe. I don't know. She, she is really good about falling asleep, uh, by herself. Uh, does this start at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time? Yes. Yes, it does. So it'll start in about, um, 20 minutes. I usually have a, um a class starts in this amount of time like you know it, it'll say 20 minutes but um for some reason the clock wasn't working and so um yeah we have about 20 more minutes um so get your canvases get your um all your supplies out and i'll be going over that shortly um but yeah i forgot what i was saying oh i was saying that she's really good about falling asleep like self-soothing um, which is really great, but it, she does kind of whimper a bit like this for maybe 10 minutes and then she'll fall asleep. So, um, but if I pick her up, then she won't do that. So I'm sorry for her whimpering. It's like she coos herself to sleep. That's so interesting. My, my son... My son, when he was this age, he didn't care for a binky, and then he took a binky for a very short amount of time, and then he was done, and he was fine. And then my other daughter took to her thumb, and she's still a thumb sucker. And this one, Amelia, is a, like, a two-finger, like, either the first two fingers or the two middle fingers. She's, like, a two-finger, and I've... It's so interesting how different kids are just, like... How many fingers can I stick my mouth? <laughs> um, let's see. I'm trying to think what else. What other announcements that I could have? I don't have a lot to get ready this time because it's just normal painting and I'm not using, I'm not using the traceable this time around. Um, but if you're new here and you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that. Uh, you'll never miss a class and we can just paint along. I also have a Facebook group that you can join and um, share your share any of the classes that you do. So um, I'll post that as well. Um, so the link I just posted is the Facebook group and that's where you can share all of your classwork um, after class or even if it's like a past class that I've done. Um, yeah. Um, I apologize for her whimpering. <laughs> Just to let everyone know, I muted. I'm gonna mute when it gets really loud, um, just so that she can calm down and go to sleep. Um, but let me know how your Christmas was. I would love to know. 
how it was, um, who'd you spend it with, did you travel, um, and hopefully everybody stayed safe. But let me know. I'd love to still chat with you guys um, while we're getting ready and people are coming in. I guess she's not loud. I don't have to. He's just staring at me. Can you guys see her? Let's see. I don't know if you want to see her. She's a cutie. <laughs> She's just staring at me. Where did they go? So if you haven't gotten out your paints yet, um, I will be using my black and white, my raw umber, and then my primary colors. So I'll be using yellow medium. Um, I use the Hippie Crafter stuff, so this is Scarlet, but just any red, any red will do. Um, and then I'll be using Phthalo Blue. Um, I tend to like phthalo blue because it's a little bit more of a warmer blue rather than like ultramarine blue, which is a little cooler, but, um, you can, I mean, you can tell that there's a little bit more of a greenish tint, um, more of like a, like a pretty blue to the, um, to the sky, but it's really whatever blue you have on hand. It doesn't really matter as long as it's dark. <laughs> Um, just spent time with my boyfriend. It was good. Don't want to be around too many people right now. Yes. Um, I do agree with that. That's why we're really confused about where I got COVID from, where I got sick from, because, like, we didn't even go grocery shopping that week. So, I we have no idea where, where I got it from. But, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully everyone stayed safe. Um, I know just like last year when there was a huge surge of COVID, um, I anticipate that happening again this year, um, unfortunately. <clears throat> um, this class, and I don't think I put it in the description, but we will also be kind of playing around with fan brushes today. Um, in some cases you don't have to use it and um, I don't know how much I will use it because I don't like this I actually just bought um, some fan brushes and I'll let you know how I like them because um, I like to buy things off of Amazon because I feel like it's really uh, approachable especially as a student um, instead of buying things off of other websites um, but Anyways, I bought something off of Amazon. I bought some fan brushes. They're supposed to be hog bristle instead of nylon, which I find um, in the past I've used those and they work a lot better. So I will let you know how I like them. I think it's like, there was like five different sizes for like 10 or $15. Um, so I will review that and let you guys know if I like them because I definitely didn't like this one that comes in the kit. But um, if you have some, we'll be kind of playing around with them for some of the um, fireworks. So if you have a fan brush, um, but we'll also be doing other things um, with it, so you don't have to have a fan brush. Um, hi, Joan or Joanne? Is it Joan or Joanne? Um, but welcome. Um, for for anyone who's new. Um, that this is my baby Amelia. She's joining us for class today um, because I got sick and we were trying to um, minimize exposure to my daughter. So um, my other daughter. So she is having a good time, <laughs> hoping she'll fall asleep in the next 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, everyone, just get out your get out your brushes. Um, if you have a liner brush. Uh, that will be very very helpful for this class because there's a lot of long skinny lines in this class uh, I mean most of it thankfully most of it is just the background and the water um, if you really look at this 
class it's mostly just sky and then reflection of sky with the water which is really cool um, but we will be using a liner brush um, if you don't have a liner brush just whatever really small um, thin round brush you have a lot of the time I would have used um, one of these brushes just a small I think this one is a two yeah these are both two um, different brands this one came in the kit um, and this one I had from a while ago um, they're both on the older side so they don't go to a tip too much um, but yeah any any small brush that you can do small lines with um, will be helpful and then as usual I will be using the um, filbert brush for the background and this is because I find that I can blend easier um, and we will probably do two coats of the background if we have time because a lot of times when you're doing dark colors especially the phthalo blue sometimes it can be translucent um, and we don't want it to be translucent so depending on how it goes we'll probably do two coats I have really liked doing two coats lately because the first coat sometimes you can see like the strokes of the paintbrush even with a filbert versus like a flat brush um, so doing a second coat it just minimizes the strokes that you see um, but if you like that then that's totally fine At least they're pleasant noises. I guess I can talk about my Christmas. Um, my Christmas was good. I we spent it actually with my brother-in-law. Um, he, uh, my brother-in-law and his wife, he was having some heart problems, so they were taking it super, super um, safe and were minimizing any um, contact with people so we were able to have them over for Christmas and that was really nice we were expecting to kind of spend it alone um, but it was nice to have them here and watch the kids open presents and have dinner with them and that was a lot of fun <coughs> but kids lulling herself to sleep. Oh, goodness. I hope you all had a good new year. Um, something I'm actually really excited for is... Hi. Um, something I'm excited for is that I actually... Um, I was making a calendar for myself, um, like a full year calendar, and then I was like, oh, that would be cool to sell. So um, I actually have in my shop, um, on my website, I have three different calendar um, designs, and this is one of them. So I plan to um, post this up, it's actually right behind the camera, but I plan to post it up there, so whenever I need to look at calendar to plan content and things like that um, I will have a full calendar so it's a digital download so in case anybody uh, wants a full year calendar and wants to support in that way I have those on my website um, we only have eight more minutes and I'm excited to paint I hope you're getting a good dose of baby right now
I should keep talking though so that it keeps like the tone the same so that it's not just like quiet and then I start talking and wake her up. So y'all need to y'all need to talk to me so <laughs> so that she falls asleep to my voice and then stays asleep for me continuing um, teaching. Uh, I recently bought a blending brush to try and help my blending. Any tips on using it? I have wanted to buy a blending brush ever since I saw Felix. Um, what's what's his? It's like I don't know. It's paint by Felix or um, something by Felix. Um, and he's got these two blending brushes. One is wet and one is dry. So by watching him. I would say um, to when you're doing the sky like I mean we're gonna do most of this but we're gonna get the sky all the, the different colors that we need for the sky um, do you have two blending brushes or just one because he uses two he uses a wet and a dry so I would say if you don't have two, use a different brush for the wet sky make sure that it's wet and then while it's still wet get your blending brush and do little tiny circles and blend it all out yeah okay so then i would i would do um if you have two then the first one you get wet and then you squeeze it out um not too much but squeeze out so that's not dripping um and then you get your paint get like a good chunk of paint put it all over the canvas um and then you'll get the dry brush and you'll you'll blend it all out um obviously i don't have like hands-on experience with this because i don't have them um but i've watched a ton of his videos um where that's what he does so you could even look them up right now and watch it for watch the first you know five minutes of a <laughs> of a thing if you want but that's that's um that's what i would do if i had those i wanted to do that but i feel like he's the only one that i've seen do that and it seems very not like it's a him thing but i don't want to i'm i'm all for trying to include as many people in my techniques and art thing that's I mean that's why I use uh basic colors typically that's why I use a brush kit you can find on Amazon like I'm very for trying to include as many people as I can um and then if you can go above and beyond and afford those things then by all means do that and use them um but that's I don't want to color by Felix yes yes color by Felix um, but yeah, that's one of the reasons why I haven't done that because then I would be teaching that and then you like in order to do that, you have to have those brushes. So that's one of the only reasons why I haven't gotten them yet, even though I really want to try them. But yeah, he's, he's one of the ones that I... He's one of the people I follow on my Instagram and Facebook, actually. But, yeah, he's on YouTube as well. Yeah, he's also got um, other, um, he has, he has tutorials on YouTube, and I think he also has a Patreon as well. Um, but he does, like, extra videos and stuff. But... Where did you buy your, um, your blending brushes? Because I almost bought the same ones that he uses. But again, I feel like I can't teach with them because you have to have those brushes in order to paint the same way. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, I would just look up Color Bay Felix and watch how he uses them. And then go from there. I'm sure it takes a little bit of uh, trial and error. Especially if you've never used them before. Did we do it? Two minutes to spare. <laughs> yes. I was stressed earlier today because I was like, what if, what if she doesn't fall asleep and she's crying the whole time and, I mean, obviously, knock on wood, that she still doesn't do that, but hopefully she will stay asleep for the majority of the class and, you know, I, don't know, I guess you can still watch the sleeping baby, but, um, hopefully, does that mean I get to put my I hadn't put this on because I was like, if I need to feed her, I don't know how that's going to work with an apron on, but I'm going to take my chance and put this on because if I don't, I mean, it's dirty because I get it all over the place and it's always when I'm not expecting it. Like I'll get it on an elbow and then I did that on Thursday, I was painting for my Patreon and I got it on my sleeve. I don't usually wear sleeves, but I was wearing a sleeve that went down to here and I got it on my sleeve and because it was my sleeve and not my elbow, I didn't know. I didn't feel it and I got all over my chair and then on my arm and that's when I was like, what is this? And I got, it was a mess, but that's why I wear an apron. <laughs> Aprons for the win. All right. We are just about to get ready. I'm excited for class. Hopefully she stays <clears throat> asleep for as long as possible. All right, here we go. All right, hello, hello, and welcome back to another class. Um, if you weren't here for the uh, pre-class chat, you you wouldn't have known that I have my baby with me. So if she does wake up and cry, I apologize. I will do my best to keep her um, quiet um, for this class, um, but I may have to get up and tend to her later. As of now, um, let's go over some supplies. Um, yeah, uh, of course we need a canvas. I'm using an 11 by 14 stretched canvas, which means I have sides, tops, and bottom. Um, so if you do have a stretched canvas, don't forget to paint the sides so that you can just put it right on the wall. And, uh, yeah, that makes it easy. Uh, I am using full body acrylics, uh, specifically I'm using Hippie Crafters um, acrylics and I will be using uh, the colors, I will be using my white, my black, my raw umber, you don't have to have raw, have raw umber but I like to tint um, colors with it. Um, and then we also have my phthalo blue, medium yellow and just any sort of red. This is scarlet, but it can be any red. Um, the blue, I have phthalo blue because it tends to have a little bit more of a prettier, warmer color when I do the background. Um, but if you have ultramarine blue, that's fine too. It's just a preference. Um, happy dance my first time. Please be slow. I will be as slow as I can. Um, Let's see. Hello, very cold. Buffalo. It's 18 here. Wow. That is cold. Um, but that's okay because you're inside painting. So, <laughs> um, let's see. Other materials. Obviously, you have your paper towel, your water, your palette, and then um, for brushes, I will be using my filbert, my large filbert. If you don't have a large filbert, you can just use a flat brush. Um, and then 
for the rest of it. Um, I'll say what I'm using when I'm about to use it, but I'll probably be using a, uh, a round brush and then if you have a liner brush, definitely get that out because that will be very helpful for all of the small lines that we're going to be creating. And then for different textures and things like that, uh, for the, not only the trees, but then also the, um, the fireworks, um, you can use uh, a couple different brushes. I'll, I'm going to be playing around with um, my filbert that I have. Um, but it's nylon, so I'm not sure how well it'll work. And then I also have this older brush um, that frays out that I'm going to use for some of the trees um, and maybe some other textures. Um, so go ahead and get your paints out and your brushes and let's get started. Um, i trying to think, does anybody have any questions before we get started? Uh, could I use navy? Navy is a dark blue. Yeah, I think that would be fine. Cause we're gonna mo like the darker, the darkest color is gonna be pretty much at the edges, and then it's gonna go to like a lighter blue, um, with our white. So whatever you have would be fine. Um, I think the only announcement I said it in the um, I said it in the chat. But on Friday, we painted this from my Patreon, and that one was really fun. I feel like it plays tricks on my mind, like um, it came out really well. So if you want to paint this, it is in my Patreon um, at the $7 tier. I put out uh, just as many classes there as I do here each month. Um, so I have uh, roughly two classes per month, and you guys get to pick have influence on what we paint in there um, and then also what we paint live um, so yeah if you want to join there I would love I would love that um, okay let's go ahead if nobody has any other questions let's go ahead and get started I'm going to get out my blue so whatever blue you have I'm using phthalo blue and this And depending on how well it goes down, um, I might be doing a second coat of the um, of the background. So I'm going to get out my blue, and I'm going to get out my white. I think I'm going to need more white than that. Okay. Um, if you had the video is kind of blurry, um, I would check your settings on your, um, on your phone or tablet or TV or where, wherever you're watching it, um, go into settings and make sure that the resolution is at the highest. Okay. It should be 1080. Um, okay. Oh, I was saying if you don't have a, if you didn't use the traceable, then we are going to go over just some um, very quick uh, kind of lines of where everything is and we'll go from there. I use, you're asking if I use a disposable palette paper. Um, I do not. This is just a ceramic tile. I actually just bought an official palette that's gray um, that should just have the color show up a little bit better because um, obviously you can't see this white white on white um so yeah this is just a ceramic tile um i'm sure you could use disposable palette paper um, or even a paper plate if you don't want to do any um if you don't want to do any cleaning which i am all for that okay i'm gonna go ahead and get just a small brush whatever small brush i have um, I'm using a two. It, again, size doesn't really matter um, because we're just going to be using this to um, figure out where everything is. So I'm going to grab a little bit of white, a little bit of blue, and mix that together with some water. I'm going to make sure that my water to paint ratio is fairly liquid. 
and this is just so that I can draw in the lines. If you already drew in the lines, if you used a traceable, then just kind of stick around for a second um, while we do this. Um, most of this is going to be in the sky. So our horizon line is going to be very, very low. Um, I would say almost, almost one fourth of the page. So this is about our horizon. So I'm just going to go quickly just across here. Okay. Um, and I would say that, I don't know if those are, oh yeah, okay, there are mountains. The mountains kind of go into um, some of the, um, the clouds. So there's, there's some mountains back here. This is a rough sketch, so it does not need to be perfect at all. It's just a sketch of where everything is so we know um, where to put things. And I actually think that I want these to come a little bit further down, like go down faster. And this is also where you get to make adjustments. So if I would have painted this all in and then put these and then realized that I went over too far, you can't really like fix that. I mean, you can, but it just takes a lot longer. Um, so by doing this, you get to figure out where everything is before, um, before you paint it in. Um, and then there's also, um, there's kind of like a little jetty here that a bunch of people are on. You don't have to draw the people, um, but that's where like some of these trees are coming up. And then, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. I think that's all we're going to do. Um, thankfully, most of this is just the sky color. So we're not going to have to, like all the detail is in like the trees. And then we're going to spend most of the time on the actual, um, on the actual fireworks. So that will be nice. Um, let's see. Let me know if you're ready to get going. Um, I'm going to use my palette knife. Let's see, where did it go? Where did my small palette knife go? Okay, I don't know where my small one went, but I have I have this one. Um, I will use a palette knife like literally all the time to um, mix paint so if you would like um, sometimes it's hard to blend if you um, if you've never done that before so this class we are we're going to be working on our blending so if you have troubles blending try to have like so for instance this sky um, is blue but you could probably break it up into three or four different colors of blue. You have this really, really bright blue that's right here, like a medium blue, and then a darker blue, maybe really dark on the edges. Um, so what we're gonna do to help blending processes is we are going to um, section this out into three different colors. So I'm gonna take some of this blue and I'm going to add some white to it. I'm just doing half and half for right now to seeing kind of where where this is, where I end up. All right, so this is a pretty good medium color, I would say. So I'm gonna take some more and only what's on only use what's on my palette knife, the blue that's on my palette knife, and mix that together with this white. All right, so I can see that I need a tiny bit more blue. Just mix that in. All right, 
right so that can be like our lightest blue color and then that's like right here and then working our way up we have this medium color and then we have our darkest color I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off my um, my palette knife I wonder where my small one went I use that all the time kind of sad I'm sure it's here somewhere um, okay um, and now we're going to move on to painting so I'm going to get a little bit of water on my brush dab it off so it's not um, it's not dripping grab I'm gonna start with my lightest first and go to my darkest so I'm gonna grab my lightest color and put that on and I can even grab a little bit of white and put it just at this top or sorry at the bottom and we are going to slowly move up um, I'm going back and forth between getting a little bit of my paint and getting a little bit of water don't be afraid to put a lot of paint on your your canvas a lot of people will kind of skimp out on this part um, and they'll struggle to blend um, now what I'm going to do as I move up I'm going to go into the darker and then kind of pre-mix a little bit um, on the on the palette before I put it on the canvas going in with a little bit of water a little bit of my blue and I'm starting a little bit above where I want it to mix so that I can mix it down going back in a little bit darker so I start up above and then I work it down and the more times you go over something the more it will blend so if something's not blending correctly, just go over it. So you'll see like there's a dark spot right here. I'm gonna take my dark, a little bit of water, take my dark, start up here, and then I'm going to blend it down. Big long strokes, go over it and over it and over it and blend it in. go straight into that I'm gonna start adding this darker color in here this video remain up for a uh, later for reference yes it will so on now I'm gonna go straight into this thalo blue and I'm just going to put all of this thalo blue on here and because thalo blue is fairly translucent I probably will have to do a second coat of this. The white in the layers before it 
um, makes it more opaque. I'm just going back into my paint and my water. I'm not worrying too much about my, um, my paint strokes right now because I know that I'm going to do a second coat, um, especially on top. And get more of this paint. And honestly, if you like this sort of look, where it's kind of like, it almost looks like there's distance clouds and things like that, you can keep it like that. You don't need to do a second coat if you don't want to. Once you have the sky, um, once you have the sky done, um, and I'm going to be doing a second coat, um, once you have the sky done, we are going to, um, real quick, I'm going to mix together um, some of this blue and some brown to make the color of the... Um, the color of the mountains. If I have any brown left. Um, so the color of the mountains is a little bit of a grayish color. Um, so I'm going to mix together some blue brown, a tad bit of black, and a smidge of white. So again, that's brown, blue, a tiny bit of black, and a tiny bit of white. And that's gonna give this almost muddy blue gray. And that's going to be our color for the mountains. Now, the reason I'm doing this right now is that we're going to incorporate some of this color into the reflection. And so we want to have that available. So 
So again, that that color is your brown and your blue, practically equal parts. Um, and then a tiny part of um, black and white. And that is a glare. Um, it's the same blue. It's just there's just a glare on the top of it. So, um, do you see how you can see like some highlights in here? That's just because you can see the canvas through. It's not an even coat. Um, it's honestly it's hard to get an even coat with a phthalo blue when it's just pure phthalo blue, which is why I usually either add some black or brown to it because it opaques it up. But I'm just I'm just going to do a second coat and I'm going to start from the top and go down. Um, one more time on the color. Um, the color for this is brown, blue, and then a tiny bit of black and white, which grays it out. And we do have a success on Baby. She is still asleep, which is fantastic. Um, okay, so now that we have this, um, I still have a, a ton of dark color. Um, so we're now going to go and rinse this out because we want to move from our light to our dark. It's a lot harder to move from your dark to your light because then you can um, accidentally get those dark colors into your light. So we're going to start back with that light blue that we have. Hopefully you still have some left. I have this light blue and I'm going to put it right here. And I'm going to do all of my light blue first, which means kind of leaving a space for this. And then I'm going to dip a little bit into this grayish color. And then you can blend it into that blue, just like that. So now I'm going to rinse out my brush again because I have that dark color in it that I don't want to put in the rest of the sky. Go back to my medium blue color and blend in the opposite side. And don't, don't go too far up. You're just going to keep blending that same section until it's the way you want. And you'll keep going darker until you're only using that blue. Until you're only using the dark blue. So for instance, you can see this um, pretty heavy line right here. I'm just going to go over it and over it and over it 
until it blends out. You can see already that it's continuing to blend. Um, and this really only works because that blue is still wet. If it starts to dry, if it's already starting to dry, um, it's going to be really hard to blend it. So you can go in with a little bit more of that lighter blue if you need to. You can also add a tiny bit of water. Make sure not to add too much because then you'll end up taking the paint off. You don't want to do that. Um, now when it comes to the bottom, I'm okay with streaks being on this because it is water. Um, so I'm probably not going to do a second coat on the bottom. Um, and I because I also didn't I didn't put on like just the blue. Like all of my blue on here had a little bit of white in it, which made it more opaque. With the exception of what I'm doing right now. going to blend in a little bit. Now I'm going to take um, this grayish color that we created and go ahead and put in my um, my mountains. The first thing I'm going to focus on is covering up all of my white. So you'll see here that there's parts of this that my white canvas shows through. The first thing I'm going to do is focus on covering all of those little bits up. And then I can come back and give more shape to them. Don't forget to paint around the corner if you have a
All right. Once you get in the once you get in this, we are going to be doing another coat of the um, of the sky. So we're going to wait on adding any detail. Um, go ahead. Let's see. We're going to wait on this until we do the sky. Okay. So at this point, if you are doing another coat of your sky, you're going to want to just remix. Um, those colors that we had earlier. So your medium blue. And this is also where you can color correct. So if anything was too light or too dark, um, you can like fix that at this point. So I've recreated my blues. And now I'm just going to start. Um, this time I'm going to start at the top and work my way down because I know that I have a little bit too much light going on here. Um, and I want to replicate what I did in the water. Um, so I'm going to start with my dark, my darkest point on top start with darkening in the corners I did add the tiniest bit of black to the corners. Oops. And I had a little bit of white on my brush. She woke up and she's like breathing heavily. So I'm bringing it down. I'm bringing my dark down a little bit further. You're essentially doing what you did before. 
except you're just going, you're working your way down instead of up. And you're going to go over your mountains so that you can get a clean, um, you can get a clean line or clean strokes, I mean. We'll go back over them. Yeah. All right. Go ahead and rinse out your brush because that's pretty much all we're going to be doing with that brush. Um, I'm now going to create um, this color. Um, it's a almost like a burnt sienna brown. So if you have burnt sienna, you could do that and then just darken it. But I'm going to grab some of my brown and some of my red. And, and I'm going to mix some red into my brown and just kind of keep keep adding a little bit of a little bit of red at a time until you get almost like a dark burnt sienna oh Amelia is awake and saying hi <laughs> In case you were all wondering. <laughs> Alright. So I'm going to take this color. Again, that was my burnt umber, raw umber, and red. I'm going to take this and go ahead and create my... Um, my little jetty going out here.
Alright, now I'm going to get a some of this red that's mixed a little bit with the brown. I'm going to do the lighter portion that's over here. Apologize for her noises. Or you're welcome, depending on if you want to hear them. <laughs> Alright, so now that this is probably dry, I'm going to go back in with this um, gray color again. I'm just going to put back in the um, however this time around I'm going to add very very small trees at the top and I'm just going to add some texture just at the very sorry at the very top I'm just turning my brush to the side and just adding little tiny bumps on the top of it It's subtle, but it is there. And then you can also, with barely any, um, I'm going to wipe off my brush because I have a little bit too much, but you can add some um, some clouds. with that same um, with that same color with barely any have barely any paint on your brush And you can add some of these. You can even add some over here. I'm just adding little snippets, wiping my brush off, and then kind of blending it out. Continuing to blend that out. Alright. Next thing we get to do is put in some of our trees. 
So I'm going to use my liner brush. I'm going to use my liner brush and use this brown. I think it's time to pick up my, my daughter. Hi, cutie. Say hi. Say hello. What are you doing? I'm gonna say hi to everybody. This is my daughter. She's pretty cute. I may or may not be biased, but you know, there's that. Um, all right, so you're gonna take your liner brush and we're gonna do some trees. So I'm going to use the same color that we did here. Um, you could do maybe make it a little bit darker with some black. Maybe I'll do that. And we're just going to put in a little tree right here. And where are some other trees? There's like another tree that's like right here. This one's got all sorts of like that. I'm going to put out a couple branches here, but and then other trees are back here. There's a couple back here and then a couple over here. All right, now before we put in our trees, we are gonna give um, a couple lights in the back here. So get out some of your yellow and we're just going to add some life to the background. So I'm gonna take some of my red and a tiny bit of yellow and a little bit of this brown. So red, yellow, and brown. And maybe even a little bit of white. And I'm just going to add some life to the background. just over that blue. And this is just omni, omniance, omni, I don't know, what am I trying to say? <laughs> um, it's just things that are in the background. So we can't really see what they are. Um, you can even add little bits of yellow for like lighting and things like that. I'm going to mix together some white and yellow. So because because yellow is so opaque or so um, translucent, sometimes adding um, some white with it helps. So I have yellow and a little bit of white. I'm going to make a couple light spots and then we're also going to reflect this in the water so this is this is where the fun part gets to begin um 
you start adding these lights and then you get to reflect them. So whenever you add a light that's bright enough, you can reflect it down. Which essentially, it's going to be the, the strongest <coughs> it's going to be the strongest at the, the base and then it will get um, it'll get thinner and you can like wiggle your brush like that We can also do that a couple times over here. Just add some dots and wiggle. <coughs> hey, babes. You want to stand? All right, so once you get some of these in here and you have all that kind of figured out, you have a bunch of these that come down here, they wiggle. We're gonna start adding some bushes and trees. So go ahead and get out some black. And then you're going to grab a brush that um, is a little bit maybe frayed um, or you can add a little bit of texture with. You're going to dip that into that brush. And notice I've only dipped it on the top half of it. And I'm going to, I'm going to start with a thicker tree. And add. And you're going to add your trees. They're going to be parts that are thicker than others, so don't feel like the whole tree has to be perfectly round or um, all the same like thickness.
I'm just going to add a, a few trees here and there. And there's a lot more bushes on the on the right side. Which we will we will highlight in a bit. For now just just put them in. And we'll highlight them with different colors. Before we go any further, we do need to add our fog. Um, so let's go ahead and add our fog, get a round brush, get a round brush, and you're going to mix your white with the tiniest smidge of red, because we're going to make a pink fog. And then I'm going to kind of try to wipe some of this off so that there's less on my brush. And I'm going to almost dry brush this onto my canvas. I'm going to go back over those trees because I realized I should have put this in first. And you're gonna put this all over. Make sure that you do it in little bits at a, at a time so you're not overwhelming the um, your canvas with paint. I think mine even needs to be a little bit more pink. And then you're also going to, with the same technique, add that to the, to the reflection. I think I could use a little bit more.
All right. So there's my there's my pink fog. All right, so then what I'm going to do is, now that I have that, I'm going to kind of re-put in some of these trees. And you're going to then add them to the water. So you do this the same way that we did the fog. Grab a little bit of paint at a time and add a little bit of a reflection. And I'm doing it in little tiny um, strokes, like the water is moving a little bit. And then don't forget to do the same thing over on the right side. I think I'm going to put a bigger tree over on the right side. Like that. Alright, does anybody have any questions so far? questions about it could be about anything um, I'm gonna put a little bit of a reflection of the top here
I'm going to take some black and give a waterline. Yes, baby. Um, and I'm going to give a little bit of a waterline. Okay, let's do some highlights on the trees. So I'm gonna take this brown that we've been using and use that as a highlight and only put it on a little bit and like the tops and the right sides of the trees over here and then on the right side you're going to put it on the top and the left side of the trees. And then the opposite for the um, the opposite for the reflections. might even need to go brighter. Hey babes, what's going on? So with this brown, I'm going to add a tiny bit of red and yellow to it, kind of brighten it up a bit. A little bit more on the redder side and then I'm also gonna add some white to it yeah so the brown a little bit more red and yellow more red than yellow and then I'm adding a little bit of my white to it. And that'll kind of be the highlight to the tops of the trees. Now, 
that we have all of that, we get to have fun and put in our, um, our fireworks. Hi, baby. All right, so go ahead and grab your liner brush. If you do not have a liner brush, then you can use a just a small brush. We're going to grab some white, and the part about this is that you want to have water in your mixture. Um, the reason for this is so that it goes on the canvas fairly easy. If you don't have water in your mixture, it won't go on very easy. So I'm going to grab this white. And I'm going to put two little dots where I want my main I mean two brightest ones and then another dot for this other one and you're just going to start from the center you want to have a vocal point and start fanning out your firework we're just going to start with it in white. We're going to add colors. If you start running out of paint, don't push harder. Just go get more paint. And this is this is the part where I really encourage you not to look at the reference because every firework is going to look different. Alright, and then once you do that one, you can move on to the second one. Make sure that you overlap them. And for this top one, I'm going to focus more on a, like a circumference. I 
and they're all going to be pointing towards the center. And this is the part where you get to play and you can use your fan brush. You can continue to use your, um, your other brushes. Like I'm going to use my fan brush. This is a way that you could use your fan brush is using to go in. another one over here once you have the basic outline of it you can start adding colors so for instance I'm gonna grab this blue here and add some some of these blue I'm going to lighten up this blue a little bit. Huh. And if you have other pictures of fireworks that you want to use of, as a reference, you can totally do that too. together a red color so I'm using um, some red and white and I'm just going to start adding this color to the mixture I don't I'm not trying to cover up all of the the white. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just adding this color to it. I think I'm going to even do more bright when it comes to these two. So I'm using a bigger brush to really add white to the centers of these. 
I'm gonna put um, Amelia down now. She's not super close to the mic. And then I think I'm going to create a yellowish white color. And this is going to be the color of the big ones that are kind of like crackling down the... Super formal name. Cracklers, yeah? Sounds about right. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to add some white just to the center of these. To really bump up their brightness. And you're just going to keep adding layers until you're happy with it. It can be colored layers, it can be white. Just make sure that it's all going back to the center. I'm going to attempt to do some cracklers with my um, fan brush. First I'm going to mix some yellow with some white. All right, so I'm gonna take my fan brush and just kind of play around and see, and see what kind of um, techniques I can do.
All right, so if you want to give a little bit of color to your um, white ones, you can do a wash, which is just a very, very, very thin watery coat of red um, or whatever color you want. And then I'm going to go back over it with white to really hone in the lightness of it, the brightness. Again, that wash is just a very, very light coat, very watery um, color. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that same color and I'm going to give some highlight all along here. I'm simply seeing where they are up here and I'm just adding it and kind of wiggling my brush as I go off the page. Just try the best of your ability to reflect that what you've already done and like where the highlights are. That way it really does look like it's a reflection. do one more 
go at the blue ones that are coming out the top. other details that you could do um, would be to give some highlights and lowlights to um, this area and then you could also Let's see, add some highlight over here. Pretty much as much detail as you want you can add. Just adding a little bit of highlight to the clouds or to the um, whatever it's called, the fog that's coming off of the let's see. I'm gonna add some more of these.
just adding some more um, lights and reflections. I really think that the reflections is what makes this painting look so cool, um, as well as what makes it look so real. And I think, I think I'm done. Um, if you guys have any, any questions, please let me know. I would love to be able to help you guys before I head out. Um, so if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, I would love to see your guys' paintings. So if you haven't already, please join my artist community. Um which is you can just look it up on facebook just look up samantha anderson artist um either under groups or uh, under my facebook page and you'll be able to find it from there um but yeah thank you so much for joining me i'm just going to add a little bit more color to this side And yeah, I think that is great. Um, if you wanted to add other reflections, you totally could. Um, like I might even, just for the sake of it, add a little bit of a lighter waterline right here. Maybe I'll do it in that pinkish red color. so you can see it a little bit better but yeah thank you so much for joining me i'm gonna go ahead and sign mine um and then i will post it and make sure to post yours i would love to see it let me go ahead and post that for you guys um here is the artist community and then um yeah make sure to like and subscribe and um we'll see you guys in a couple weeks for a another class. All right, have a great night. Bye guys.